From submarines that went AWOL for decades to strange blocks washing up on the beach in Florida, here are 10 mysteries from World War II that took decades to solve. Number 10. Missing U-Boats Found After realizing how vulnerable their open-top U-Boat enclosures were in 1940, the Germans started building bunkers to protect U-Boats, also known as submarines, from air attacks. One vessel, known as the Elbe II, housed three U-boats, the U-2505, U-3004, and U-350. The British bombed the bunker, causing the roof to partially collapse and trap the U-boats within. Attempts were made to scrap the boat during the 1940s and 50s, and parts were taken, but the endeavor proved too dangerous to be carried out entirely. The U-boats sat untouched until 1985, when they were rediscovered inside the Elbe II's destroyed bunker. During the 1990s, the German government decided that the vessel was dangerous and filled it with gravel and concrete. While the Elbe II still sits on the bank of the Elbe River at Volkenhofen, the area was turned into a parking lot, rendering it inaccessible. But at least we now know where the three missing U-boats ended up and where their final resting place is. Number 9. Heaven Can Wait In 1944, a B-24 bomber called Heaven Can Wait was shot down off the Papua New Guinea coast while carrying 2nd Lieutenant Thomas V. Kelly Jr. during a mission to disrupt the Japanese shipping supply chains. His remains were never found, and his family was left to grapple with the lack of closure. In their attempts to come to terms with Kelly's demise, they had a tombstone made, bearing an etching of the plane and the words, in loving memory. Some of Kelly's distant surviving relatives found information online about the B-24 bomber in 2013. They spent the next several years conducting further research, ultimately leading to an ocean floor search by oceanographers and archaeologists, which was covered in a 2018 New York Times article by Mike Ives. The long-missing B-24 bomber was found thanks to the nonprofit Project Recover, which works with the Defense POW-MIA Accounting Agency to find, identify, and return the remains of World War II personnel. Discovered in Hansa Bay, it's one of five U.S. aircraft that are believed to have gone down in the area during World War II. Since 1973, the remains of nearly 3,000 U.S. soldiers have been recovered. This may seem like a lot, but some 72,000 individuals remain unaccounted for, and only 26,000 are considered recoverable. While advancements in forensic science are helping in the effort to send fallen fighters home, experts are fighting against the clock, as remains become more difficult to identify with time. Number 8. Missing Man Recovered the Navy cruiser USS Indianapolis was destroyed by a Japanese torpedo in July 1945 as what's been described by many as the Navy's worst ever maritime disaster. The vessel sank in less than an hour. Sailors and Marines perished in the actual sinking, as well as afterward from saltwater poisoning, dehydration, and shark attacks. In 2018, the wreck of the USS Indianapolis was discovered 18,044 feet below the water surface in the Philippine Sea. For a long time, the death toll was believed to number 880 and 316 were believed to have survived. But the Naval History and Heritage Command's Histories and Archives Division announced in 2018 that these figures were wrong and that 879 people died while 317 lived. Due to a clerical error, Navy radio technician Clarence William Donner was listed as being on the ship when he actually wasn't. Once researchers saw the error, it brought the total count of those aboard the ship down from 1,196 to 1,195, thereby solving the decades-old mystery of an unidentified missing man aboard the ship. Imagine if you were declared dead by mistake for being on a ship that sank in the war. You'd have no identity. You could start fresh with a brand new life. Would you? Tell me your ideas in the comments below. Then remember to subscribe to American Eye if you haven't already for more intense videos. Number 7 landing craft wreck located. In 1943, a British vessel called the Landing Craft Tank LCT-326 disappeared with 14 crew members aboard. Military officials concluded that it probably encountered bad weather or hit a mine and sank somewhere off the Isle of Man. Marine scientists finally found the vessel last year off Bardsley Island in northern Wales. It was discovered 25 miles south of where experts had believed it was all along. New research revealed that the vessel's escort ship, HMS Cotillion, last witnessed LCT-326 in the area where it was recently found, despite official recordings claiming that it sank off the Isle of Man. The wreck was discovered broken in two, resting 300 feet below the water's surface. Although its identity was unconfirmed when the news made headlines, chances are good that it's LCT-326, as the vessel lies right in the path of the flotilla it was traveling with when it vanished. 
Measuring 190 feet long and 33 feet wide, the sunken vessel also matches the dimensions of the LCT-326. Designed to land armored vehicles, LCT-326 and others like it participated in amphibious operations like D-Day. The recently discovered wreck appears to have gone down in rough waters and likely broke in half before plunging to its final resting place. Number 6. War Criminals Missing Remains Former Japanese Prime Minister Hideki Tojo was convicted of war crimes and sentenced to death in 1948 for his role in masterminding the attack on Pearl Harbor. He and six others were hanged. American officials handled the remains, keeping their whereabouts a secret to prevent the glorification of the executed men as martyrs by ultra-nationalists. Earlier this year, Nihon University professor Hiroki Takazawa announced that he had found the answer to this long-standing mystery through declassified U.S. military documents he examined in the U.S. National Archives in Washington, D.C. Takazawa spent several years poring over the documents before publicly disclosing his findings. Based on the evidence, he believes that Tojo's ashes were spread from a U.S. military aircraft over the Pacific Ocean, roughly 30 miles from the city of Yokohama. This is the first known time that details about Tojo's final resting place were found in official documents. His great-grandson, Hidetoshi Tojo, told the Associated Press that he was relieved by the information, and the unknown location of the remains had long been a source of embarrassment for the family. Number 5. USS Greyback 52 U.S. submarines were reported missing during World War II. At least a handful of them have been found as part of an initiative called the Lost 52 Project. In 2019, the organization announced its seventh discovery of a lost submarine, the USS Greyback. Found 1,427 feet underwater off the Okinawa coast, it's the first U.S. submarine to be discovered in Japanese waters. After discovering a document error in the longitudinal calculation for where the USS Greyback sank, the Lost 52 team figured out the correct location. Using advanced technology, including sophisticated robotics, they found the wreck 100 miles from where the original historical record specifies. The USS Greyback sank 14 ships and menaced and disrupted many others throughout the war. It was imperative in the Allies' success of the Pacific Campaign at Guadalcanal. At the tail end of its career as one of the most successful World War II submarines, the vessel disappeared during its last mission in 1944 while en route to the East China Sea. A month after leaving from the patrol mission, the crew communicated that the sub only had two torpedoes left. It was ordered home, but word spread shortly thereafter that it was damaged by enemy aircraft. All communication ceased from there, leaving families of lost crew members without closure until the USS Greyback's rediscovery 75 years later. Number 4. Palm Beach Rubber Bales Authorities were stumped last year when large blocks of material similar to rubber cement began washing ashore in Palm Beach, Florida. Volunteers from the nonprofit Friends of Palm Beach were the first to spot the strange objects. For several weeks, beachgoers and snorkelers reportedly spotted the blocks, but failed in their efforts to remove any from the water before they washed away. Finally, in the wake of Tropical Storm Isaiah, three of the blocks washed ashore and were successfully retrieved. In the coming weeks, three more were collected. On the inside, they were solid, with thin rubber layers and a honeycomb-like pattern. The bizarre objects were bales of natural rubber latex, according to Jerry McCall of the R.D. Abbott Co. rubber supplier, who spoke with the Palm Beach Post. He further explained that the blocks were of a style characteristic of South American manufacturers, but nobody could say with certainty when or where these were made. A study published earlier this year suggests that the blocks dated back to World War II and that they come from the same shipwreck that caused rubber bales to appear on the Brazilian coastline. The vessel in question is the Rio Grande, a German ship that U.S. forces destroyed near the country in 1944. It would make sense for the blocks to get caught in the Gulf Stream and make their way to Florida. The bales from both Brazil and Florida are similar in appearance, but more research is necessary to confirm their source. The explanation is plausible, especially considering that rubber was in high demand during World War II and is something militaries would have been transporting in their ships. Although the Rio Grande rests three miles below the water's surface, it's possible that metal-eating bacteria corroded the ship and released the bales from within. This is just one possible way they could have reached the shore after being submerged for over 70 years. It's also possible that someone illegally salvaged metal from the Rio Grande, causing the blocks to surface. Whatever its source, it's just weird to see strange rubber cubes from World War II washing up on shore, don't you think? Number 3. Looted Treasure The discovery of a German World War II-era ship last year made headlines for its potential to solve an age-old mystery surrounding looted treasure. 
One of the war's most famous mysteries is the whereabouts of a collection of valuables the Nazis took from the Amber Room, a gilded chamber that was once a fixture of the Tsarist Palace. The trove was last seen in the modern-day Russian enclave of Kaliningrad, which was a Baltic port city known as Königsberg during the war. It departed the port in 1945 on the Karlsruhe steamer, which was sunk off the Polish coast by Soviet aircraft. Loaded down with heavy cargo and 1,083 passengers, the ship had left in a hurry as part of a massive sea evacuation called Operation Hannibal, which relocated over a million German troops and civilians amid the Soviet advancement into East Prussia toward the war's end. Last October, Polish divers claimed that they found the wreck. It contains military vehicles, porcelain, and crates filled with unknown contents, according to diver Tomat Stachura. Whether these crates contain the missing Amber Room treasures remains to be seen, but the prospect of finally finding the vanished collection is nothing short of intriguing. Number 2. Family Letters Returned Websites like Ancestry.com are proving instrumental in reuniting long-lost family members, as well as helping people recover missing family heirlooms. While renovating a Toronto home over 10 years ago, a contractor named Dave Smart discovered a box with letters dating back to World War II behind a basement furnace. Written between 1939 and 1941, they were exchanged between a husband and wife named Arthur Robert Whitley and Amy Florence Gorman. After holding on to the letters for several years and embarking on his own search for surviving family members of the pair, Smart sought the help of Parliament member John Brassard. The local community also joined in the search and helped to uncover important details about the correspondence. Their efforts led them to Scott Gorman, a relative of Amy Florence Gorman, who they contacted through Ancestry.com. Gorman recognized Amy's name in a news story about the letters, but he wanted to make sure that the article was speaking about his relative and not someone with the same name. He consulted his aunt, who corroborated details of the story from memory. She confirmed the connection and even provided a photograph of Amy Gorman's father. Scott Gorman's efforts to document his family's history on the website played a major role in finding a rightful owner for the letters. Speaking with Barry today, he said he planned to read through them and hopefully upload them so that they are available for others to read. And number one, Glenn Miller's disappearance. One afternoon in December 1944, a plane carrying big band leader Glenn Miller disappeared while flying over the English Channel. The aircraft was carrying the celebrity from England to France after he gave up his career to serve in the military and entertain soldiers overseas. The plane and Miller's fate are one of the war's most intriguing mysteries. In 2014, researcher Dennis Sprague claimed that he had gotten to the bottom of the tragedy. He examined long overlooked military records and concluded that the plane Miller was traveling on crashed after fuel intake froze, causing the engine to stop. This happened while the aircraft was flying low due to poor visibility giving the pilot a mere eight seconds to react before hitting the water. Colorado Public Radio reported that Sprague believes the lightweight plane disintegrated upon impact and that those aboard died instantly. Miller was in his 30s when he joined the Army and became a major, putting on musical performances in Europe to boost soldiers' morale. He also participated in an anti-propaganda effort, broadcasting in German to combat the Nazis' brainwashed tactics. This work caused some to believe that Miller was a spy for the Allied forces and that he was perhaps assassinated. But Sprague clarified that the anti-propaganda campaign is much different than acting as a clandestine spy. Another theory suggests that the plane was shot down in an instance of friendly fire. Evidence that surfaced during the 1980s showed that 138 Allied planes dropped their bombs into the English Channel while returning from an aborted bombing mission, indicating that one of the explosives may have hit Miller's plane but the timing of Miller's flight and the returning military aircrafts just doesn't match up. Records show that the plane was experiencing icing problems and that these details were not shared with the public, making this the most probable explanation. If Sprague's findings are correct, it means that Miller's death was far less shrouded in conspiracy than many seem to want to believe. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time here on American Eye.